Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Moroni. I'm the Associate Art Director for the massively multiplayer role-playing game Star Trek Online, an officially licensed free-to-play game developed by Cryptic Studios and available on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. I've been on the STO team for over 11 years and worked on our starships about half that time. The game itself celebrated its 12th anniversary at the beginning of 2022, and thanks to a renaissance of new Star Trek shows is still going very strong. Star Trek Online's longevity has certainly been helped by all the new Star Trek content of the last few years, but even more important is the loyalty of its player base and their fascination with STO's mix of ground and space-based gameplay and Starship customization. Players joke that the true endgame of Star Trek Online is Space Barbie. STO players love to customize their captains, officers, and even spaceships with a wide variety of options. For Starships, these visual options include swapping major parts of the ship, choosing between a large variety of material options, and even personalized name textures. Star Trek Online Starships are designed and modeled to accommodate this player-driven customization. The Starships are modeled in modular pieces that can be switched between various options, allowing players to choose from a variety of silhouettes and styles. The second major piece of ship customization is the ship's material set. Instead of modeling it using a high-low bake workflow, STO ships are modeled at their final game resolution and then unwrapped to a standard UV template. Every ship and ship material in the game shares this template. This means that any starship in STO could potentially use any of the hundreds of starship materials in the game. This modularity in modeling and texturing offers substantial flexibility well suited for an MMO. Starships become yet another avatar for the player, and by allowing them to broadly customize their ships, it is easy for players to emotionally connect with their personalized starship. The customization choices make the vessel theirs in a profound way, and it plays into STO's central fantasy of embarking on your own Star Trek adventure. STO's high degree of personalization is an artifact of Star Trek Online's age. Launched in February of 2010, STO is a classic MMO with large social instances, discrete player avatar progression, and the large selection of solo and multiplayer content. STO's special sauce resides in its unique naval-style space gameplay combined with character-focused away team missions on planetary environments. Letting players be both their captain and their ship offered several angles for progression and customization that has blessed the game with incredibly strong retention over the years. When planning for this, Star Trek Online's pre-launch art team had to create a system that satisfied requirements for customization, while also making sure that the shipbuilding pipeline remained manageable for ship artists to develop and expand as the game grew and more ships were added. The process developed by the original ship art team has essentially survived the ensuing decade intact. While triangle counts and texture resolution have increased, the basic modular nature of STO's ship modeling and UV pipeline remains. Like a classic suit, our methods have gone out of style and back in style again when compared to hard surface workflows in the industry at large. The pipeline of building a ship for Star Trek Online starts with our concept artist. The team collaborates with them to develop the concept design which will guide the 3D artist when creating the final asset. Once the concept illustrations are done, the ship artist will model the ship, keeping in mind the eventual UV requirements as they go. After modeling and UVing, the artist will do a detail pass on the model to add floating geometry for surface features such as windows, escape pods, and other decals. When the model is complete, the ship artist will begin the extensive data setup that allows the ship to make use of STO's robust customization options. We'll examine these stages individually to consider how Star Trek Online has maintained an asset creation pipeline over the past decade that can still produce high-quality Starship models with a relatively quick turnaround time, all while continuing to offer players the opportunity to trim their Starship just the way they like. As much as STO's ship art owes its popularity to well-executed models of canon designs originally from Star Trek films and TV shows, STO's ship releases also offer Star Trek fans brand new designs created bespoke for Star Trek Online. Working within an established intellectual property is both a blessing and a curse. As artists, we are driven to create something new, but it is also our duty to serve player expectations as to what a Star Trek starship looks like and how it works. Indeed, Star Trek fans are very engaged in the series Treknobabble, established through a variety of official publications over the years. This rich catalog of background information on how Star Trek ships might actually work also means that any 
details in a Star Trek ship have an assumed function, and we do our best to honor that as we develop our own Star Trek designs. This form-follows-function approach provides us with guardrails that keep our designs rooted in an established lore of the universe and provide a robust visual language to utilize. In some ways, this is liberating, as by embracing certain visual details familiar to Trek fans, you can ground a design that might otherwise feel like a radical departure from the expected. These original designs are usually conceived as a modernization of an existing Star Trek ship, taking the basic silhouette of that ship and updating it to a unique visual style meant to represent the 25th century timeline that STO takes place in. Star Trek Online's setting is 40 years after the Star Trek TV shows of The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, so its original starship designs have roots in those graceful 24th century starships, but use sleek, clean lines and high-contrast hull plating to show how Starfleet technology has evolved in the last few decades. STO senior concept artist Hector Ortiz begins the process of designing a new STO ship by considering any starships in that family of ships. The team deliberates on which features are important to the vessel's lineage and which features could be changed to offer players something new. After dozens of sketches, the team will hone in on a direction that balances two goals, fulfillment of player expectations versus the desire to create something unique and interesting. This is naturally a very subjective process, and oftentimes the team tries to land on designs that align with the IP but also blaze some new ground. Once Ortiz has the general silhouette nailed down, he will begin blocking out the concept in 3DS Max. The team likes to start blocking out ships in 3D early, as it gives us a good feel of how the starship will look from any angle. In STO, players can look at their ship from any direction, so we want to make sure that the design will show well from all sides. This early 3D white box phase allows us to easily examine a variety of shapes and proportions and copy off new iterations to quickly try suggestions, alternatives, and kit bashes. Playing with rough concepts using basic 3D geometry allows us to be experimental and flexible and provides fertile ground for fast collaboration and can occasionally lead to happy accidents through the use of the symmetry modifier, parts instancing, and the like. Concepting a new ship in 3D also helps us understand how a new variant might interact with existing ships within the family of parts we are adding the new ship to. We can import our existing models to compare the previous variants with a new design in 3D space. This can help anticipate issues with customization and scale early in the process, preventing a lot of headache down the road. Once the 3D blockout is approved, Ortiz will take his rough model and use it as a foundation for a final concept piece that explores the details and materials of the ship more thoroughly. This illustration is the final inspiration for the ship and is sent to an internal ship artist or one of our outsourcing artists to build the final asset. Because the concept illustration is based on Ortiz's approved white box model, the ship artists can leverage that model as a starting point for their work, kicking off the project with a solid grasp on the target proportions and shapes for their model in 3D. With the finished concept in hand, the ship artist begins creating the model that would be the final in-game ship. As mentioned before, Star Trek Online ships are built to their final in-game triangle count, with the base geometry weighing in around 40,000 triangles. Because ships are controlled by players, emit powers, and have various customization options, under the hood they are considered costumes by the game engine. Various families of ships share a skeleton of parts, but instead of head, neck, or arms, the bones of this skeleton are saucer, hull, and the cells, for example. The skeleton represents a hierarchy of parts connected together in ways that are an abstraction of the ship's physical arrangement. The most central part of the ship, where its center of mass might be, is the hull, and from there, stanchions branch out to connect to things like saucers and the cells or mission pods. On a ship skeleton, we can create a variety of different variants that share the same basic layout and design heritage. Because the various bones of the skeleton are modeled as individual objects, they can be swapped by the players independently to allow them to create their own Star Trek designs. Because we do not need to unwrap our low-poly model for a bake, floating geometry and large UV islands are fine for the final in-game asset. By utilizing these modeling shortcuts, we can avoid too many unnecessary cuts into the geo, saving both time and triangles for where they might be needed most.
even though we are not building sub D models, intentional regular topology is still important to make the most of our tiling material UV sets. Panel shapes on the final texture sheets are generally square or rectangular, so if panel lines need to follow curvature in the hull, that curvature should be modeled in. If there are specific panel lines we need in certain places to match reference or to provide natural breaks between panel types in our UV sheet, we will cut in lines to the surface of the model and map those strips to trim sections of the UV layout. We can use shapes to create elegant bezier paths and use the shape merge compound object to create a perfect cut into our surface geo. After cleaning the result, we run a small inset to create our panel trim. The updated chamfer tools and newer versions of Max are essential for rounding small edges to add scale and catch light. Chamfering key corners can also make the difference between a model reading as a game asset and hitting that feel of a physical or constructed object. Just remember to uncheck that smoothie group button. New in Max 2021, the Weighted Normals modifier is another essential modeling tool for us when building starships. As we do not bake our meshes, we cannot rely on the normals in our baked textures to add edge details on the model. Thus, small chamfers with weighted normals provide crisp edges perfect for a model that represents a large starship. As you can see here, we create simple chamfers to smooth the edge transitions on large blocky shapes. Smoothing these edges can help add scale and detail to the model, but can bloat the triangle count with too many edges in the chamfer. But without enough edges, our model can look bloated and pillowy once we apply the smoothing groups we want. That's where the weighted normals modifier comes in. It will adjust the direction of vertex normals according to the size of the face they border, turning an object from a lumpy pillow to a crisp hard surface. This workflow has been around in hard surface modeling for a while, but it's nice to now have a native solution in 3D Studio Max. Luckily for our ship artists, Star Trek starships are, generally, symmetrical. Usually we only need to model half of a ship and use the trusty symmetry modifier to do the rest of the work for us. Autodesk has also recently made great quality of life improvements to both the symmetry modifier and the mirror tool, making it easy to apply symmetry along several axes at once, or mirror apart without needing to flip its face normals. While it's easy to think of modeling and UVing as two separate stages in the process of ship creation, because the same artist both models and UVs a ship, occasionally it makes sense to UV as we go. This can be true on ships with large ellipsoid saucers that have rectangular hull plating, but also have various cuts and insets in the saucer geometry. UVing regular rectangular quads before cutting can make the UV and detailing process go a lot faster than trying to massage oddly shaped UV islands after the fact. As mentioned before, all of our Starship hull materials are laid out to an existing template. This template has three horizontally tiling paneling sections, two horizontally tiling trim sections, and a variety of areas for ship-specific details. While these details and panels may look different per ship, their function is generally similar enough that these different materials will translate across ships. This UV template is used for every ship and every ship material in the game, and has been for 11 years. This means that even older ship models can make use of our brand new materials, and vice versa. We can also release items that will allow players to apply new materials to any of their ships, which have become value chase items in the game for microtransactions and mission rewards. The STO ship team creates every ship material to the universal UV layout. Artists begin work on materials by modeling a high poly mesh of panels and details. This mesh will then be baked to a flat plane to create ID, AO, normal, and height maps. Once we have these foundational bakes, we bring them into the program's Substance Designer. There we use those bakes to drive the materials and add additional colors, tiling nodes, and other tools to create the final maps we use to make our material. These maps are diffuse, specular, gloss, and loomy. Once the material is complete, the ship artist will begin UVing the model. The artist has already built the model with this stage in mind, so various panel sections are separated into UV islands and positioned on the appropriate place in the sheet. We might use Quick Peel in the UV editor to quickly flatten and relax large sections of paneling. 
If required by the model, we will try to regularize the vertices against the panel grid in the material so that the panel grids flow well with the topology of the model. Since we do not have an overall ambient occlusion bake for the ship model itself, we may make use of the normals and AO baked into the trim portions of our material by cutting in small trims at the intersections of various pieces to fake AO at these positions. To make unwrapping trim easier, we do our best to cut the trim sections as quad strips. We do a quick peel to get a rough scale for this island established, and then run a straighten operation to quickly align the geo to the tiling trim on the texture sheet. After straightening the strip, we need to check the width of each segment on the UV space against the width of that segment on the model in 3D space to make sure the general area of the quads are similar to avoid stretching and tearing. A small number of ships have unique details that might require an alpha channel or a scrolling texture or some other unique property that doesn't fit onto our standard material template. In those cases, we will separate the geo off as a new piece and create a specific material for that detail. Because Star Trek Online ships are mapped with horizontally tiling textures, we could not use bakes to create large painted designs, custom AO maps, or even weathering patterns that naturally flowed across the ship irrespective of how the panels were tiled. But now we have recently created new shaders to take advantage of a second UV set. We can use this in a variety of ways to create additional texture layers that still feel integrated with the ship's primary tiling hull material. Previously, if we wanted a large painted area on a ship as seen in this example of the Enterprise from the Mirror Universe, we would have to create a piece of floating geometry and lower the opacity of its material enough that underlying normal detail could come through, all without lowering the saturation of the decal itself. Now, our new shader allows us to map the same area of paneling twice, once for the tiling panels and a second time for whatever pattern we want to be painted on. The new shader blends the tint from the paint pattern with the normal spec and gloss of the underlying panel material. This preserves the tiling surface detail while also allowing us to faithfully replicate the distinctive look of several ships that have these kinds of large painted designs sprawled across their hulls. In certain instances, we have also used this to create a very specific weathering and AO map to dial in the look of a ship as it was seen in Star Trek. Doing a custom bake and second UV set like this does add to the production time of a ship, so we cannot do it every time, but are glad for the opportunity to utilize it when it makes sense to do so. When unwrapping is complete, we can move on to the final detail pass. Star Trek ships have an established collection of details and greebles that generally belie some function in the universe, and STO ships aim to honor this legacy. Star Trek ships are generally considered capital ships. That is to say, they are large ships that can crew hundreds or even thousands of people. It is important to us to be able to sell this skill to the players and to make the ships feel impressive. This is complicated by the fact that STO's space gameplay is in the third person. For a third person game to work, the player's avatar, a starship in this case, needs to be small in the center of the frame so it doesn't obscure the rest of play space where the enemies and objectives are. To combat this, we try to create a few levels of detail on our ship models so that there are large areas of visual rest, areas of medium visual density, and small areas of very high intensity detailing. This large, medium, small contrast evokes the same pattern of details one sees on a real-world battleship, aircraft, or rocket. It rewards the player for taking the time to look over their ship and appreciate the small and dense areas of detail in addition to the ship's larger silhouette. The most obvious detail on Starfleet ships tend to be the large suite of windows and escape pods that dot the ship, communicating their massive scale. To allow players to select their own style of windows and escape pods as another axis of customization, we create these items as a separate object and use floating geo pushed out slightly from the hull. Aside from windows, we also have sheets of small decals that denote hatches, warning markers, and other details. We use the freeform modeling tool to place these decals. We position them where we want them relative to the ship on the XY, and then use the conform tool to shrink wrap them to the ship's hull. Light is another detail that is very important to bring these starships to life. Unfortunately, when STO launched, we had a very limited number of lights to work with in a scene, so our ships do not have a way to build in actual emissive lights. 
Instead, we have created a shader that reads vertex colors to mimic the behavior of spilled light. The artist can paint color onto vertices, and that color will be additively applied to the whole material to make the material seem to be lit by nearby engines or spotlights. Once the detailed pass is finished, the artist must prepare the geo for intake into the game. To do this, they need to add objects in Max that we call mount points, which are generic objects that provide pivot data to the game engine. These nodes indicate where various effects like weapons fire, damage leaks, scanning beams, and engine trails will appear on the model. As part of this process, the artist also positions the attachment mount points that determine how the component objects of the ship, the saucer, neck, and so on, attach together. The game respects the position, scale, and rotation of these mount points, and the pivot of a component is set to be at the same location as the mount point it is locking into. When building a new variant of ship into an existing family, we must test fit the new parts with existing pieces to make sure that new ship's engines, for example, work with all of the existing struts they attach to. This can be a tedious process, but the end result is a system that allows players impressive freedom to pick and choose the pieces they like to make their own unique Star Trek ship. Once we complete a ship and import it into STO's proprietary engine, that ship can come to life for our players and offer them another chapter for the story of their captain and crew. As video game artists, we must always consider the context for our art. A ship in Star Trek Online isn't just a bunch of triangles and materials, but a character in its own right, with its own set of abilities and powers and lore that help immerse players and take them into the final frontier. One of the key motivations for players in STO's early game is starship progression. As they gain experience, they unlock the ability to fly a diverse selection of more powerful starships organized by tiers of power, starting at Tier 1 and ending at Tier 6. In the past few years, we have also retooled our progression system to allow players to choose to fly powerful Tier 6 ships from the beginning. Those ships will level up with them over time, maintaining a sense of progression for players who just can't wait to get their hands on the latest and greatest. Ultimately, though, this progression feeds into art and design choices that we make. As the ships increase in power, we want the art for those ships to communicate that escalation to the player. Tier 1 ships use designs from previous eras of Star Trek, including the original series, the first six films, and so on. As players progress, they unlock starships with more advanced visual styling from the next generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Ships at the ultimate Tier 6 power level sport the sleek and advanced signature style of STO's 25th century. But starships in STO aren't merely a replacement costume for the player's character. They have their own inventories of items and powers that players must cultivate as they play. These items are inspired by Star Trek's rich history of technological lore and include things like weapons, deflector arrays, defensive shielding, and impulse engines. We use this collection of gear to offer another axis for reward for players by creating special items that can actually change the appearance of a ship. These items might replace its material, but they also might add special geometry to certain nodes of the ship around its engines or deflector. They are often tied to effort-intensive gameplay systems and become a badge of honor for those who earn them. To make all of this work, we have a very complex set of data structures for each ship under the hood. Earlier, the ship's skeleton was mentioned. This term can mean a few different things between our animation system and our costume system, but ultimately in both cases it represents how the pieces of a ship fit together. Beyond that, though, is a large set of geometry and material definition data files for each ship that abstract model, texture, and other costume data. These definitions inform our front-end UI how to display the ship in the player-facing ship customization interface and to tell the game which materials the ship can use, which pairs of nacelles link together, and so on. One of the more popular features for our customization enthusiasts is the ability to actually order a 3D print of your starship. We partnered with a vendor named GamePrint and set up a pipeline that exports a player's ship model and textures to GamePrint for 3D printing. At the push of a button, a player can send a model of their exact ship with all of its customization intact to GamePrint. Upon receipt, GamePrint will prepare the model and then create a full 3D print for the player. This physical model can be up to 12 inches in length 
and includes the player's custom part choices, their ship name, its material, and even its paint patterns. Creating this pipeline was tremendous technical effort, but it was a great way to foster the bond players have with their ships, as there is something very special about having a desktop model of your own unique Star Trek ship. Of course, when Star Trek Online launched 11 years ago, the horsepower of gaming machines and player expectations for graphical fidelity were very different from where things stand today. Our tools, hardware, and standards have all changed a lot in the last 11 years. To stay relevant for our existing players and new Star Trek fans joining us in the era of Discovery, Picard, Lower Decks, and more, the STO team is consistently and gradually updating the game's visuals to a modern standard. We have gradually increased our triangle count per ship from 8,000 at launch to over 40,000 now. Advancements in video card and console technology has given us a lot more freedom to build the complex and smooth geometry required for accurate recreations of most Star Trek ships. In addition to updating geometry, we have also drastically improved the fidelity of our materials. Originally made with Photoshop plugins for normal map creation, our materials now are baked from high poly sheets. We use Substance Designer to create detailed, high quality textures and can rapidly iterate on these materials to get the best possible results. We have also been building a good relationship with Viacom CBS and other Star Trek licensing partners. In many cases, we can now have access to the actual models used in the VFX shots of the new Star Trek TV shows. Being able to build with this reference in hand has made a huge difference in the quality and accuracy of our new ships. Over the course of STO's 12 years, we have developed a niche for ourselves with a large body of work, including hundreds of ships, Google Star Trek ship, and there's a good chance an STO screenshot will be in the results. As we embraced our role as one of Star Trek's primary torchbearers between the Kelvin films and the Paramount Plus era, we would go to annual Star Trek conventions to meet Star Trek fans and STO players and stay engaged with the fandom at large. This awareness was a critical component to our operation as a long-running live service game, allowing us to tap into what our players wanted. But even more than that, it was critical to the health of the STO team's morale. For such a long-running game, the STO team has remarkably low turnover, with a lot of senior developers having done a tour of duty longer than five years. Aside from building relationships with fans, we also reached out to other licensors of the Star Trek IP to see how we might work together. Our hope was that if ships from Star Trek Online appeared in other places like toys or comics, that would widen our footprint, excite our player base, and recognize the effort and expertise we had built over the last decade. One of our early successes was with the IDW comics during the fall of 2019. They were creating a prequel comic to promote Star Trek Picard's first season. IDW needed a new ship to feature in the comic named the USS Verity, and STO was sitting on dozens of ship designs that could fit the bill. After some discussion, IDW chose the Odyssey-class Star Cruiser, one of STO's flagship designs, to represent the Verity in the comic book. We worked with them to include some back matter about the ship, and got coverage from a variety of pop culture news outlets after the collaboration went live. We also built a relationship with the partwork company Eagle Moss, who produce a collection of small desktop models based on Star Trek starships. Eagle Moss created a series of 20 collectible models of Star Trek Online ships and worked with us to create companion magazines that discuss the in-game lore and behind-the-scenes design process for each ship. The most exciting collaboration, however, was revealed on March 3rd, 2022. In the first episode of Star Trek Picard's second season, four ships from Star Trek Online appeared in a Star Trek television show, making the transition from licensed work to official in-universe canon. As longtime Star Trek fans who have been designing new Star Trek ships for over a decade, it was an incredible opportunity to collaborate with the Picard art department. We were able to contribute to the design process for the new USS Stargazer, as well as provide several STO original designs to appear in shots that called for a fleet of starships. Our recent push to update our models made this a possibility, as our newer models were detailed enough that the Picard VFX crew felt comfortable using them fairly large on screen, up to a quarter of the frame. 
By providing our models to Picard, we were able to make the Star Trek universe larger, create a stronger synergy between the IP holder and licensed partners, and save the production tens of thousands of dollars in asset creation costs. All of that said, Star Trek Online is still over 11 years old. We are doing well with the tools we have, but I thought it would be worth touching on how we might do things differently if we were starting fresh with today's technology. The most obvious place to start is PBR materials. STO uses a custom spec loss model to drive our shaders, and we would love to be working with a more industry standard PBR rendering option instead. Another technology that could make a big difference for us is parallax occlusion. Adding this element to our shaders based on height maps could really add scale and complexity to our player ships by adding depth to our windows and making small hull details really come alive. Decal shaders are another opportunity for improvement. Unreal and Unity can both use mesh decals that can be placed flush with the underlying surface, and the game presents them correctly as one unified object without problems of z-fighting. In STO, since we are just manually creating a small vertical gap between the decal and the hull, we occasionally struggle with z-fighting, scaling, and effects issues. Finally, starting up a brand new pipeline would allow us to make use of multiple UV sets per model. We could do one unwrap using the tiling textures method to preserve textile density and allow customization through swappable tiling textures, but also make use of a traditional high-low bake for special details and ambient occlusion. Of course, this would significantly increase the time it takes to make a ship, so the target production timeline for a ship would have to be carefully considered. Ultimately, we are lucky to have had the opportunity to work on a game that has lasted for 11 years and is still going strong. Not to mention, Star Trek is a beloved universe and new fans are boldly going every day. We are grateful for the opportunity to build the ships that players command to explore the final frontier in Star Trek Online. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the chance to shoot the ship about how we continue to build assets that players want to collect, personalize, and share for a long-running MMO.